The previous videos from Chapter 9 showed examples of finding the Laplace transform of various exponential signals. In this video, we will see how to find the inverse Laplace transform of exponential signals. In other words, starting with a Laplace transform x of s, we wish to go backwards and determine the signal x of t. We are focusing on exponential signals because they are important for LTI systems. This is because exponential signals are the solutions to the linear differential equations that describe LTI systems. The formal definition of the inverse Laplace transform is shown here. Notice that this is an integral. In fact, this is called a contour integral in the complex plane. The bad news is these are somewhat tricky to perform. The good news is we won't actually have to do any of these integrals. Instead, we're gonna be concerned with cases where we can do the inverse Laplace transform by simple inspection using results from the previous examples. Let's look at some examples. So in this first example, we're gonna perform an inverse Laplace transform by inspection of the Laplace transform that's given to us here, x of s is equal to two over s plus three, and we are also, we have to be given the region of convergence. In this case, we are given that sigma is greater than negative three. So our goal here is to find the signal x of t associated with this Laplace transform. So the solution, first of all, since the region of convergence here is a right half plane, in other words, the region of convergence is to the right of negative three, we know that x of t must be a right-sided function. Now this comes from regional convergence property number four, which are summarized, all the ROC properties are summarized in the lecture notes. So we're gonna use the Laplace transform pair for a right-sided exponential signal, which is shown here. So by inspection, we know that a is equal to three, because down here we see s plus three, and that uh, that compares here with s plus a in the denominator. So uh, with a equal three, we know that from this left side of the transform pair, x of t must be equal to e to the minus three t times ut. And then of course we have to, we can't forget the two up there is just a coefficient that goes out in the front. So our final result here is x of t is equal to two times e to the minus three t times u of t. All right, let's look at one that's a little bit different. Um, let's suppose in this case, we're given the Laplace transform y of s is equal to three over two s minus one, and we're given the region of convergence sigma is greater than one half. So our goal here is to find the signal y of t in the time domain. So the first um, problem with this one is that if we look at the, the form of this Laplace transform, we don't have s by itself, and we haven't seen um, a case where s is not by itself before, but we can quickly remedy that by just dividing the top numerator and the bottom denominator by the factor of two, which is out in front of s. So dividing all terms by two, we get three over two on the top, that's three halves here. The two s, of course, we're dividing by that two to get s by itself, that's our goal. And then this one here, becomes one over two or one half. All right, so now we've got y of s in a form that we recognize. Um, this is again, a um, the region of convergence here is uh, given to us as greater than one half. So this is a right half plane. So we know that y of t must again be a right-sided function. This is again, region of convergence property number four. Thus, we're gonna use the Laplace transform pair for a right-sided signal, the same one that we used um, in the previous example. So by inspection, if we look at this thing here, we can see that you know s plus a on the bottom, we have s minus one half, therefore a must be equal to negative one half. Um, and let's see, we have up on top, we have a factor of three halves or one and a half. So let's put that one and a half out in front. We have e to the minus a t, where a is negative one half, so the two minus signs cancel each other, and we end up with one half t or t over two in the exponent. So there is our final signal in the time domain. Um, 
let's do another one here. This one's a little bit different. So let's suppose we're given the Laplace transform x of s is equal to 4 over s minus 2. Now what's different about this one is the region of convergence is given to us as sigma is less than 2. Find the signal x of t. Now we have to, this is a little different, the region of convergence here is describing a left half plane. So we know x of t must therefore be a left-sided function. This is region of convergence property number five in the lecture notes. Thus, we're going to use the Laplace transform pair for a left-sided exponential signal, which is given here. Now again, by inspection, we see on the bottom here, we're looking for s plus a, and we have s minus 2, so we know that a is negative 2, so we can just substitute uh, for this a here. We put in a minus 2, again, the minus signs cancel, so we end up with e to the 2t, and then, of course, the 4 on top is just a coefficient, a multiplicative coefficient that goes out in front. And don't forget, a left-sided signal picks up a negative sign when we have the uh, Laplace transform. So that, that's where the minus 4 comes from. And uh, the other thing uh, we have to remember to do here is because this is a left-sided signal, the step function that's attached to the exponential signal is u of minus t. That's the time reversed step function. So we have u of minus t there. Now in this next example, we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. Let's suppose we're given the following Laplace transform in region of convergence. Here it is. x of s is equal to 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2 and the region of convergence is given to us as sigma is greater than negative 1. Again, our goal is to find the uh, time domain signal x of t. So the first thing we're going to do here is factor x of s. And then we're going to perform partial fraction expansion. So what we can do here is just by trial and error, we can see that the denominator here, s squared plus 3s plus 2, factors to s plus 1 times s plus 2. And then we're going to break this into two pieces using partial fraction expansion. Um, I've omitted the details because you've done this several times before and you know how to do this. But here's the result here. Um, you know, we have the first term, s plus 1. We have a over s plus 1. Turns out that a ends up being 1. And for b um, over s plus 2, the second term, uh, b ends up being minus 1. So we pick up the minus sign here, minus 1 over s plus 2. Okay, so we've broken up our... Laplace transform into two pieces here that we can easily invert by inspection. But what we have to do here is we have to be careful with the regions of convergence. So our next step is to create a pole zero plot for x of s. All right, so that's shown right here. Um, we're given that the region of convergence is sigma greater than minus one. So if we look at our um, x of s, we can either use this form right here or this form over here on the right, we see that we have two poles. There's a pole at minus one for this term, and there's a pole at minus two for the second term. So those two poles are plotted right here. Now, the region of convergence was given for the overall transform. It was given as sigma is greater than negative one. In other words, the region of convergence is everything to the right of this pole at minus one. So that's the region shaded here. Now, here's where the, the tricky part is we have to come up with the regions of convergence for each of these two terms, this term and this term, such that when we take the intersection of them, they produce our desired result over here on the left. So let's take a look at the first term. The first term is one over s plus one. We know we have a pole here at negative one. The second term is one over s plus two. We know we have a pole at negative two. Now, we have to somehow find the regions of convergence, which can either be on the right side of the pole or the left side, such that when we take the intersections, we get this region over here. The only possible way to do this is if both of these terms are right half planes, such that when we take the region of, uh, I'm sorry, the intersection of these two regions of convergence, we get this total region of convergence here. Now, what this means, since we've come up with two right half planes, that means each of these two terms 
must correspond to right-sided signals. Again, this goes back to region of convergence property number four in your lecture notes. So we know for right-sided signals, we have the following Laplace transform pair. This is the one we've been using over and over. So by uh, simple inspection, we can look at these two um, terms here. In this case, this first term, we have A equals one. So we have E to the minus T times U of T. And for the second term, we have A equals two. So we have E to the minus two T uh, times U of T. And again, both of these are right-sided functions. Thus, they both have a step function U of T attached to them. Now, in our last example, we're gonna do a little variation of the one that we just did. Suppose um, we were given a transform, let's call it y of s this time so we don't confuse it with x of s, but it has the same transform, one over s plus one uh, times s plus two. But what's different about this example is the region of convergence is sigma in between negative two and negative one. All right, so let's proceed like we did before. Let's first take y of s, and we're going to, um, we've already have it in its factored form. Let's do our partial fraction expansion, um, which is nothing different than we had on the last slide, the same result, one over s plus one minus one over s plus two. Okay, the next step then is to create the pole zero ROC plot for y of s. So that's shown here on the left side of this diagram. Now remember what's different about this, you know, we have the same two poles at negative one and negative two, but our region of convergence is a vertical strip in between the two poles. That was given to us up here in the problem statement. So the challenge for this again, is to come up with the individual regions of convergence for the first term and the second term, such that when we take the intersection of those two regions of convergence, we end up with a vertical strip. Well, the only way to do this is that this first term must be shaded to the left of negative one, and the second term must be shaded to the right of negative two, such that when we take the intersection of these two, we get the desired result, this vertical strip between negative one and negative two. All right, so what does that tell us about the function then? Well, this is a left half plane, which means we have a left-sided function, all right? So for a left-sided signal, all right, we have this uh, Laplace transform pair down here. And so we have to remember there's a minus sign in there. That's where the negative sign comes there. Um, by inspection, you know, we see again, A is one. So we have E to the minus AT or just E to the minus T in this case. But what we have to remember is that the step function here is U of minus T. That's right here for left-sided signal because this one goes to the left. Now the second term, the one over S plus two term, well, that is a right half plane for its region of convergence, which means it must be a right-sided signal. So here we're gonna use this Laplace transform pair up here, the one we're more familiar with. Um, in this case, A is two, and we have a U of T, not a U of minus T. Um, this minus sign in here came from the partial fraction expansion up here. So here is our final signal that produces this Laplace transform up here. 